Hello, VOD people. Okay, let's see. I'm going to move this a bit. There we go. Okay. Here we are. So, uh, this time we are continuing our work on a D&D related app, basically. Let's see. Uh, let's just head into the proper folder. Oh, this needs to go higher up. That's right. There we go. Uh, a D&D related app. If we run this, we should get a live site. Uh, oh, that didn't work. Okay. Do you have trouble finding that? Oh, it's probably building still. Nope. Okay, hmm. Well, I'll show you my terminal. Seems like. Yeah. Oh, man. I've written localhost wrong. That's why. There we go. Okay, let's uh, hide the terminal again. Okay, so what we're building. <clears throat> This is a simple app, design not final, which helps you run a dogfight combat in D&D 5th edition using the Aces High rules published in the third issue of, um, uh, of Arcadia, which is D&D... Uh, magazine published by mcdm so if you want to do complete rules you either have to support their patron patreon or uh, buy the issue outright in their web store so this will only help you run the encounter it won't show you any of the rules because that would be well not legal uh, let's see can i click yes this one Okay, yeah. So, let's have a look. We can start a combat. We select a name for ourselves. Uh, I think it should be DM right now because of some of the temporary things I've set up. So, when you start the combat, the first thing you do, uh, or the first step is to add all the players. So, usually... You, you'll enter your DM name if you're the DM, and then you'll share this link. You can click here to copy the encounter link. And the other players will connect by going to that link and selecting a name for themselves. The next thing you do is you start scrambling, which is kind of the, it's the initiative role for the aerial combat. So you get five seconds to roll a d20 and selecting a... Uh, your best bet on a result. So we can click this and roll the d20. And it showed a lot of stuff at the same time. So I'm a bit uncertain on how I want to display that. But what it does is it shows you, uh, let's see, let's go back one step and try that again. So when you get in here, it shows you how much time is left. What your current role is, it's a one on a d20, and your opening altitude, which is how high up you start in the combat. So the higher your initiative role, the higher up you start, and the higher you are, it gives it basically gives you more uh, advantage or more advantage in the combat. So you, you're you're better off being higher up, basically. So these are the uh, starting altitudes of all the players, the DM and three fictional players called Bill, Amy, and Rory. And when we start combat, we can see that all the players are assigned their proper positions in the uh, in the starting altitude. So the regular combat is done from altitude two to six. So usually you use the uh, D6 to measure or to indicate what altitude you're at. So these are, these are the regular aptitudes. 
Uh, altitude one is basically you're about to crash. You're basically just skimming um, whatever your ground is. If it's the mountaintops, if you're high up fighting, or maybe it's a, a water of some kind, or just like the, the ground, basically. What we were able to do, you can hover and see who's who. And then you click and you get to change their altitude. So a lot of this, it's just happy path all the way. So like this altitude, this should probably be a selector or something saying which altitude you want to change to. Or in some some cases, it should probably be, it'll probably be like you're, you're selecting. Because you can change altitude by, by spending dice, basically. And you should probably um, be shown like a array of all your dice and you select which one you want to use. So you can change altitude to level eight, for example. And this changes the altitude. It moves up here. And these lines indicate that there are altitudes between here that are not currently uh, where, where no one is at the moment. So if like this number, Rory here, if he moves up to 11, We'll see that there are two lines uh, between here, so that's nine, ten, and then eleven. Should probably be one more line at the top here, I guess. Huh. Well, whatever. See, yeah. So the <laughs> the uh, the hover thing is covered by this uh, line up here, also. Yeah. So this is these are not final designs by any means. They're basically just meant to implement all the different things, and get them working and then I'll get back to the design later um, and I and I say that as if I actually know how to design stuff <laughs> uh, let's see I have enough screen uh, uh, something happened to the stream no no I have enough stream uh, checklist which I am where is it? Uh, do 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 Asus. There we go. Yeah. So the the app itself is called Asus. It's uh it's short for Acrobatic Combat Encounters in the Sky, and <laughs> it's basically <laughs> it's basically just uh just a play on words with the original rules being named uh, Asus High. Uh, so I thought, oh, Asus, it should be probably be a play on words regarding the rules. So that's what I came up with. So let's have a look see. Where are we at? Okay, so we got the starting altitude. And some of the some of the um, help that this app will will provide is uh whenever it's your turn in combat. You'll have like a list of your different conditions and the stuff you can do to rem to remind you what the rules are at this specific moment. So if you've ever played like D D or whatever in a virtual tabletop, like um, Fantasy Grounds, Foundry, Roll Twenty, whatever, they are usually very generic. So they will basically have a combat a combat tracker or something that would tell you it's now your turn. But often they will not help you with what am I able to do at this moment? And they usually don't tell you. That's because they are very generic and that stuff is very specific to the rules of the different games and very often too much work to put in. But I want this to be very much in the vein of it's very uh, customized towards those rules. So when is your turn? You will be told here are your available options. This is what you're supposed to do now. After doing that, these are your available options. And these are the things you need to remember when you're uh, when you've got this condition or this is the thing you need to remember when you're at this level or yeah, whatever. So I made some notes from for myself on what, what to implement. So the next thing is we've got the the initial view here, which tells you how far up is everyone. I'm just going to check if there is. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. We iterate 
through the layers. And if there are <clears throat> yeah, and if the layer is less than seven or there's a player present, render a, a, uh, render a layer with the players. And if there is not, if it's not less than seven and there is not a player, just render an HR. But shouldn't that render a line above this 11? If we move this back down uh, to like 5, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12 is missing, isn't it? Let's inspect this. Uh, let's inspect this more specifically. Uh, so the article, yeah. So this is level eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, it is there. Is it behind the thing? Ah, okay, okay, it's behind the thing. How tall is that thing? That one, yes. What's what's this? Six ninety-eight. Yeah. Um, so that's like seven. No, no, that's not right. Oh, 52 high. Okay. Is there like a, do I have like a, uh, cause everything is inside cases and you got layout. This is the layer for this, right? And it puts everything into main. This is a three, three rem top margin. Is that very deliberate? I don't think so. I think it's just a randomly selected number. There we go. There's the last one. Maybe the nav should have like a bottom border or something. Uh, let's have a look at picnic CSS, which is the CSS library used here. The reason I'm using it is, is because it's really easy to get started with because it is very opinionated and intrusive. So if you just write button, it will style that button for you. So you don't have to put anything, no extra classes in just to make it style a button, which is, I like it. It means that I don't have to write, and I, I don't have to think too much about what kind of CSS I want to write, but it, if I just write plain HTML, it will get it get a look. <laughs> That's not the default one. Um, so I think that works out pretty well. Uh, let's have a look. They have a nav thing. If you just write nav, which is nice. Does it sh 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 do 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 for demo represents the body? Okay. But does it? Um, Yeah, okay, I'm, I might have selected the three EM from here and just made it a REM thing. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't say. So we'll leave it at for REM. That's... Might there... Is there maybe a border at the bottom of this? No, I don't think so. Not for the nav at least. We'll just add one in. Border bottom. Uh, solid. I don't know. One pixel. Slate gray, I guess. Or maybe it should be like a, uh, ah, whatever. That works. That works. Uh, let's just uh, commit this. 
Uh, yep. Um, fix bar. Uh, no. Fix nav related layout bug. Adds bottom border to nav to more easily distinguish nav from page. Increases the top margin of the content to the forum. Okay. There we go. Let's have a look at the next thing to implement. So whenever we are here and in combat, there are two phases. The First one is a stun phase, then an action phase for each player. That's what they do during their th turn. So in the stunt phase, they roll dice and try to um, uh, they roll d fours, and by you, but combining the results of the roll in different ways, they get different kind of bonuses. Um, <laughs> so I think the first thing we need to do is actually implement some kind of uh, tracker which decides in which order the different players should do their turn. And I haven't actually made a note of this in my notes. So let's have a look at Arcadia 3. I think it's this one. So this will be off screen to you guys, but... But... Do, 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 do. Yes, we scramble. We have the altitude die. Let's see. Okay, scrambling, uh, do, do, do. roll d20. You add your flight modifier to the result. Okay, so the the thing you roll plus the flight modifier, which is a modifier decided by what kind of creature or vehicle you're flying with. So, for example, according to these rules, if you're an adult dragon, you get a plus four flight modifier, which is based on your size and your flight speed. So let's go back and have a look at, um, can I maybe make this window a bit smaller to be able to see stuff? Okay, so for the, for the players, uh, where do I add that? That's probably during scramble. Yeah, so we got this app state, which has an add player thing, right? And they have an opening altitude, which we add. This takes an, uh, a name and an opening altitude. Okay. I'm just thinking right now. They need to enter their hmm. 
Hmm. They need to be able to enter their flight modifier. So, yeah. Let's think about that for a second. So in this thing, we probably need to add a field for inputting the flight modifier. So this is in the setup. We've got an input for the Dungeon Master name. Hmm, should probably, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that later. Uh, that's the label, blah, blah, blah. This should flex with four. Okay, yeah, we'll just copy this and reuse this for the next thing. So this will be, no, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, flight modifier. Label. Let's go to strings. Yep. Right back here. We got flat modifier, three fourths of the space is a text field. Um, placeholder, uh, flight modifier, placeholder. Uh, yeah, uh, we want to bind this to something else. Flight modifier, I guess. Like so. We don't actually want to run start. Instead, what we want to run is uh, if you hit enter, we probably want to move autofocus down to the next input, I guess. Actually, Do we rather want to show them side by side, I think? Yeah, I kind of want to do that instead. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's make another section. It's going to be a flex. It's going to have two columns. This is actually one thing I like about Picnic CSS, that it has the ability to create a grid, but you can choose how many columns you want in the grid, which is, strangely enough, not very common. And I I don't really know why. It's so very flexible. Uh, so what we want to do here is basically take this thing, um, Yes, this, we want to put it in here. We want to write, uh, do you want anything? Hmm. We'll just make a div, paste that in. And we will say that this, this will have the class of, no, nah, probably not need a class. Uh, then we make a copy of this. And change this to flight modifier label. Those will be our headers. Remove this. Uh, we can remove this. 
we get a new section. It has two columns. The first one is an input. It is not three fourths. It's still text. It is still the same placeholder. It does have the binding value. Um, I don't think we do any key up handling. I, I feel like it makes more sense to just let them tab. Uh, the next one, we don't need the label anymore. I uh, don't need the ID. It's not supposed to be three fourths. It's text. It has the, um, the, uh, placeholder. And when you hit enter, it should try to start. So let's add the oh, let flight modifier. Let's make that an empty string as default. And this needs to check that we are allowed to start at all. So this should, pr should probably check, right, because this assumes that if you don't enter a name, it uses the placeholder. But it probably should hmm. should probably check if flat modifier is set at all. So if we don't have a flat, mo flat modifier, just return. And if we do, we say, right, because we set the player name. What's player name? It is something from state. I think I remember what this is. Yeah, so you set your player name. Should we maybe add the flight modifier later? No, because I think that we want to be able to add multiple combatants, multiple creatures of some kind, both for the DM and for the players, if the players are controlling more than one creature, for example. And we want to be able to add all of them. And they do have individual flight modifiers. So we could either add, ask them to add all the names now, let them scramble. This is interesting. If the DM or the players have multiple creatures, do they all scramble the same? Hmm. The rules does not specify. I think we just let them all scramble the same. Yeah. The flight modifier will, will differentiate different creatures or vehicles from where they are in the initiative order, but it will not differentiate them in at which starting altitude they've got that's uh, that's so that's okay i think so we want to store this won't work in the in the long run anyway hmm I don't really know why we do that. Uh, yeah, it's because we want to remember the state. <sighs> Maybe they should just be called actors. Hmm. I think it should. Ah, crud. <laughs> okay. Let's... But why do we store this here again? Because we want to remember somehow. I don't remember what the, I, I, I'm pretty sure that there was a logic behind doing this, but I don't really know what that is.
why do I not just store it in the uh, the app state? I should probably just be able to say which of the actors are mine. Shouldn't I? Because we got players here, and they, they're not really players, they're more combatants or actors in the in the combat. Not necessarily it's not a one-to-one -one relation necessarily. So now the question becomes, should I optimize for multiple actors per player now, or should I do it later? And I'm kind of inclined to just supporting one actor per player for now, just to make it just to make it easier for myself. Might be a bit, a bit of work re, uh, redoing this for multiple actors later. But I kind of just want everything to start working first and then have to worry about like having multiple actors per player and stuff. Yeah. We kind of want to do an MVP here. So let's let's do that first. I still think it's kind of weird calling them players. I think we rather should call them actors because they're actors in the combat. Or maybe another name, combatants. No, I, th I think I'll call them actors. Because, hmm, yes. Well, they might be a creature, they might be a vehicle. And if there are multiple people on the same vehicle, they get the the same initiative order, or they're, they're, they have the same initiative as the rest of the vehicle, basically. So you might have a pilot and a passenger, and the pilot and the passenger have this, the same initiative order, if I remember correctly. They do their turns um, at the same time. So I think it makes sense to call them actors instead, actually. Hmm, let's call that a later refactoring. <laughs> but what I'm wondering is... Hmm, there is no clear separation between the player that connects and the player in the combat, or the, or, or the actor, rather. And there probably should be. Because we need to know the difference between this is the player controlling someone and this is the thing that they're controlling. That should be two different things, I think. Because that hmm, that makes it easier to, re, uh, to, to add multiple actors per player later. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it should be the DM adding all the actors and the players connecting, selecting which actor they're supposed to control. This is all based on, on like good faith. So we are assuming that the players are, um, we're assuming that the players are non-hostile basically. Yeah, I think we're doing this all wrong. I think this should be actors, which the DM adds first with all their modifiers and everything. Then the player can play when and when the DM says that they're ready, they move into the connect phase. So first add all the actors, let the players connect, then it's scramble phase. That makes a lot more sense, I think.
So the, the, this basically assumes that. Sorry about that. This basically assumes that everyone is non-malicious, basically, and no one has malicious intent. And I don't think that's too far-fetched in this scenario. So I don't consider that a, like a uh, a problem or a a um, what's it called a threat vector, if you will. Okay, so we're, <laughs> we're starting up by redesigning some of the screens. That's fine. We we kind of knew this would be a thing at some point. So this is the start. We start encounter. So th th oh, wow, that's not what I expected at all. Uh oh yeah yeah yeah, they're in separate things. That's that's what we expect very much. So let's see. We've got uh, do, 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 do this in here, and we need to put this input. Hmm. We don't want to do this. Then we move this input into here. Remove this section. We save. See that it works. Should have some padding around here. We'll get back to that. That's a design thing. Should have a way to add another, um, another actor to this. So what I'm suggesting is this is the start button. So let's make this like a font size 2EM. So quite big. Whoa, that is very big. I also like the animation. I'm not sure why we got the animation, but nice. Uh, maybe one and a half. <laughs> let's uh, try to limit this. Uh, one and a half. That is better. I think it's still a bit big. Maybe 1.2? Yeah, that's probably fine. Uh, and the next thing we do is we add another section. And this will let us add another combatant, I think. Or maybe there should just be... Maybe when you start typing in the first line here, you should just add another directly under. So there's always another, like a field to, to add. I actually think that's a good idea. Let's let's try that first. Yeah. Okay, so we need to change some stuff. Uh, let's start with the uh, the visual things first. So we got some labels here. So instead of calling this DM name label, let's just call this actor name instead. Oh, actor, actor name label, flight modifier label. Uh, this should be actor. Uh, let's change this to be actor name. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. This is the flight modifier. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, okay. So we go up here. We got actor name and flight modifier name. So that's not really rele relevant anymore. What we actually want is a an array of actors. And let's just call this. We actually already have a type called player which I think is in here in state. Yeah, that's exactly where it is. Let's see. Here we go. So this is not a player. This is basically an actor. So it's got uh, the actor's got a name. So let's rename this uh, actor. So we got an ID, a name, and current altitude, right? Uh, initiative, initiative, which is, hmm, let's think about this for a, just a quick second. Because altitude is basically just a discriminated union where you have to select one of these 11 numbers. And I'm thinking we kind of should do the same with initiative. 
let's just have a quick look in the rules how um okay so the yeah so the flight modifiers so the flight modifiers uh go from uh, let's see, minus four. Minus four to plus 15. But I think they are, well, they bottom out at one. So it can be between one and 35. And the question is, should I just make a discriminated union, which specify that, that it should be a number between one and 35. And I actually think I want to do that just to make it um, kind of follows a a uh, not tradition, but like a philosophy that you shouldn't be able to present uh, or to represent illegal states. So we could just say it's a number, but that could be any number, including uh, decimals uh, or floating numbers. But we don't want that. We want exact numbers and within a very specified uh, specific range. So we probably should just say that that this is this actual range that are that is supported so let's just call the this initiative and just say that that it can be one of all these let's just um seal this oh ho, ho, ho. yes yeah, very easy here we go 12 13 14 uh let's see 15 16 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm not really sure why I, why I just didn't do this. Oh, come on. Oh, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 5. There we go. Uh, actually, I thought, thought it would. Um, whoa! Wow, that is correct. Sure, let's just have it like that. Um, initiative, yes, yes. So that's the that's the thing. Yeah. So in the old scramble, we don't add the actual role that they do uh, get, but we do add the altitude and the initiative. Yes. Okay. Uh, right. So we got actor. Uh, let's call this actors. Do we have any errors in this file? Yeah. So we got actors push. And as the wrong shape, that's fine because it needs initiative. Yep. And initiative should be entered when you try to add a, add a player. No, add an actor. So let's call this initiative. Initiative, like so. This should be named add actor. Uh, yep, so we add all those. Um, update. Actor. Actor. Actor, actor, actor. I don't think we need this player name thing anymore. I don't think. Let me just um, give it a moment's thought. Mm. I'm inclined to think no. I don't think we need this. We're going to remove it. 
and we'll have to re-add it later if we're not going to use it. So this player ID, I actually want to keep this because this just generates an ID for your as 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 a for you as a player, and this is to make it easier to reconnect to your old. If you if you disconnect and come back, I want you to kind of easily re um, uh, get back to your uh, to your actor basically. So you can say, oh, last time you were connected, or this actor still says that you are the one controlling it. So here you go. So maybe actor actually should have like a. Um, Maybe actor should actually have a player uh, uh, ID to show who's controlling it, or should that be like an array separately from this, which connects every actor with a player? Don't really know why I should have like a connecting thing. Nah, we just store it directly on the player, I think. <laughs> directly on the, the actor. Uh, so this should be an ID. Do we have like a... No? Hmm. What's this return? Just a string? Yeah. That's probably fine. Sure. Okay, let's see. This needs a um, player. Yeah. So player should just be an empty string. It could be, it, it, maybe you can make it like optional, but I'm not really sure I want to do that because it's just, that would just complicate the code everywhere else because when we enter into the 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 combat proper this should all be set the question then becomes should this maybe not be now nah, we'll just leave it like this we'll leave it like this the the alternative would be to add like a setup actor kind of structure where you've got an actor that's used during setup, which uh, where where um, ID name have to be added first, and then you add, um, right, the flight modifier. We're not adding, adding this over here. Ooh, that's interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> right. We should maybe have, uh, we should probably have like a, a setup actor structure, which defines a name and a, a name and a flight modifier. I think a name and a flight modifier. And then we when you get to the scramble screen. everyone gets assigned like in a, a preliminary actor, their role, and then you were able to set the altitude, the initiative, the player, everything. Right. That is probably easier and or better. Methinks.
Okay, so if we're doing that, if we are doing that, maybe that shouldn't be in the up state. Should that be a different thing? Is there any point? <laughs> The app state kind of implies that it's the global state for the whole app. And that's kind of what I'm thinking of it, of it as, uh, or that's kind of how I imagine it too in my head. But in theory, we could just create small separate things for, this could just be like the, the actor state. And then we have like a different setup state uh, previous, earlier which might actually make it a bit cleaner. But then we would have like an actor state and then there would be like maybe, so this is just for keeping actors. So we would just make the array, the direct value instead of having to dot through everything. <sighs> that might actually be better. But in a, but if we want, if we want to have interactions between the different states, it's more difficult if they depend on each other, I think. Not necessarily, though. Kind of thinking, probably the, the guiding principle should probably be whether or not things should be serialized or, or rather saved together as a unit. That's probably what we want to start with. Because what we do here is that we subscribe to the app state and whenever there's a new state, we store it in the local storage so that the DM can go back to like the previous or get back to its pre uh, their previous encounter, previous encounter. And I think that is useful, to be honest. And we probably want to store the complete app state as a single thing if we do that. So setup is separate from that because we're not inside of the combat yet. And once we enter com, once everyone is ready and we have scrambled and everything, that's when the data for the encounter is actually ready yeah that makes a lot more sense so this is shouldn't be app state even wow we are really <laughs> redesigning this today okay let's have a look um doo -doo -doo -doo. so first of all this should be named instead encounter state because that's what it actually represents then we will change this to loaded Loaded encounter state. Okay, good. Uh, this should no longer, this has the type of app state. Uh, we should change this to be encounter state instead, like so. It's got actors, yes. We'll rename this encounter state, like so. This is good. Uh, we add an actor, we update the actor, we reset the actor encounter state. Yep, this all looks fine. Then in addition to this, we need a setup state, which is basically just a list of, of actors for the coming combat. Yes, so uh, let's see, we probably want to insert this here. So export in oh, interface, hmm. setup actor, preliminary actor. Sure, we're just going to set up actor. Uh, it's got a, uh, the actor's got a name, which is a string and they've got a flight modifier 
modifier, which is an she's a flip modifier. And now we're back to this. <laughs> <laughs> Should my flat modifier be its own kind of thing? I think actually we want to do this. We've already started down this road, so why not? Um, so we'll create a flight modifier. Export type flight modifier, which can be any number from minus four. That's the l lowest modifier you can get. And then you got minus three, minus two. This is the best part of the stream, just watching me write numbers. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, oh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. There we go. I don't want to do that all the time, but there we go. So we've got a setup actor. And I think we basically want the same. We want this whole setup all over again, basically. I'm actually wondering. Uh, let me just head into the settings, which you won't be able to see. But I think we got prettier running in this environment. Let's see. Um, prettier. Prettier. There we go. Yeah, it should save on TypeScript and Svelte. Yeah. Reformat on save. I'm just surprised that it doesn't reformat the, the big things on save, but okay. Whatever. Uh, we've got the setup actor. Just wondering if I just should, should just extract this into its own separate, like a kind of, uh, not this, but uh, this part. No, not that part either. This part. Should that be its own separate thing? I'm kind of thinking that it should be. These are subscriptions which should last the entire lifetime of the application, right? Basically, yes. Yeah, this is going to be const create store. And at the end, it returns the was well, it's called encounter state inside of here. So let's just do that. And then uh, we need to uh, pass in the store name, which is a string. I should rename this to oop, store and this to store. Da, 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 da. Let's go back a bit. Okay, loaded store. Uh, store. So we're passing in. Ooh, can we make? <laughs> How do I make this generic? Can I do that at all? I don't think so. I think you need to use a proper function definition, actually. Yeah, sure. Let's just do that then. Function. And I think you put it here. So like, uh, store, I have T, whatever. This is a T. Uh, yeah, we, we need to name this. So create, 
create store. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see, we need to define like, where did we Oh, yeah, right. Encounter state, set of actor, create store, and then here we say const encounter state. We create a store with the name of encounter state. And this should probably claim that it returns a T. And this would be an encounter state. No, it, uh, it, it returns a uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, a writable of T, that's what it returns. Yeah, so we should probably should just import this as a import type writable, writable, there we go. So that creates the encounter state and loads it and everything, right? So now we can do the same for uh, setup state, which let's see, create a store and it's called setup state. Oh, oh, yeah. Setup state. which is of type set of state. Mm. Let's think about this. It's basically just an array. Should we make it more fancy than that? Or should we just let it be an array? I think we just should be like, let it be an array. Set up actor array. There we go. Ooh, we actually need to pass in the default value. That's a good point. So default value of T. Yeah. Value. So this, uh, let's just delete this and write default value instead, and we pass that in here, default value. And the default value of this is just an empty array. There we go. Okay, this is good. I like this, I think this is better. So now we're gonna export this, export const uh, setup state. It's gonna be a thing, and So when you subscribe to this, this is uh, the first subscribe, we you just subscribe to the setup state, right? So that's just you get to straight in return. That's that's nice. Uh, subscribe. So when you subscribe to this store, you just get the uh, the the array directly. But then we also want to provide a way to add new items. And you could do that by, by just setting the store, but I don't want to expose that directly. I want to do it through a function so that we're, um, so that we are certain that we add new setup actors in the correct way. 
Because we, we could just expose this this store directly, the writable store, and you could call, um, you could just do like dollar sign setup state equals, and then just push push the new, uh, set the new array. That is possible, but I much prefer to expose functions that do what we actually want to just make it e easier to use, but also. Uh, it also prevents us from using it wrong, basically. So let's do that instead. So uh, add actor. Let's just make it easy. Uh, this is going to be one of these. Uh, it's going to take a name. It's going to take a... Which is a string. And a flight modifier. Flight modifier. Which is a flight modifier. There we go. And... All that's going to do is just add, uh, actually, we can just shorten this to be setup state update, update. Yeah, update. We're going to pass it up in an updater, which is going to pass us the current state, which we just call cur, like so. And we'll do this. And this, and I think that's the right amount of parentheses, is it? Uh, right. So instead of this, we're just going to return return the original array with the addition of name and flat modifier. That's all of that. Yeah. So down here in the encounter state, we're probably we're gonna get back to this. We'll we'll fix this after. We'll start by using this set a new setup state inside of the setup thing. So this is all ruined now. That's fine, that's fine. Uh that's what we want. So we're not going to call actors here, but we're going to import the setup state from here. We are going to, first of all, uh, we're, Okay, we're going to start off by listing all the actors, all right? So we got two headers as we want. Then we want a separate section for each of the things, probably. No, what we actually want is, like, uh, let's just make an article for every line, like so. And we are going to iterate each, uh, let's see, dollar setup state as actor. We're going to bind to the actor.name and the actor.flight modifier, like so. Right. This is complaining about something. Closing tag, tag match, ma uh, matches nothing. Okay, that's weird. Did we forget to close something? Oh, yeah, right. We did. There we go. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we're back at a legal state. Uh, let's... Let's actually update the strings. We'll update, doo -doo -doo. it's not called DM name thing anymore. It's called actor, which we write this way. Same goes for this, actor. Save that. 
did not make a difference. <laughs> no, uh, well, hmm. Actor name label. Actor name label. Uh, we probably need to do the restart or something to make it work. A refresh at least. This is not supposed to be DM name. It's supposed to be, let's just call it actor name. Uh, the placeholder. It doesn't make sense to make it engineer extraordinaire. Uh, let's just make it. Hmm. What's a fun D and D monster? Do we think? I don't know. Goblin chief. I don't know why. It's a goblin. No, you know what? Goblin chiefs don't regularly fly. So mm, let's select something that does fly. Uh, should it just be a dragon? That's very on brand, I think. Yeah. Let's just make it an adult blue dragon. Those are fun. Uh, flight modifier label. Flight modifier. Place holder. Uh, this will just be like, what is a uh, plus four actually? Got those in the back. Let's change the actor name placeholder and the, yeah. So those two are okay. Uh, when we start the thing, Yeah, we don't do those. We basically just start by going to another page. We might just change this to like an, an href thing, but we'll leave it as this for now. Um, just in case we change our, sorry, change our minds. The question is though, should we just have, an, have a, a specific button for adding new actors for now and just add the automatic edition later? I kind of, I kind of want to add it now because <laughs> that, that's how I want it to work. So maybe it should just be, uh, we'll just add it now. That makes the most sense. So let's see, we want to add it now. How do we do that? By doing this, I think. Do we just check the last line if it's valid? Yes. So we do setup state. And then we get the last length minus one. So that should be the last element, const. Which actually makes me think the default state for this shouldn't be an empty array. It should be an array with one actor in it. Yes. Empty name. And flight modifier equal to zero. Wait, do do we actually allow zero? Yeah, apparently. Do we though? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we get the last one. Uh, we call that uh, last actor. So if last actor has a name and uh, last actor's flight modifier uh, 
Hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Because we need to make a differentiation between being set and not. Right. So I think this should be optional. Or rather, this or undefined, actually. That's what we want. Oh, undefined. Yeah. And the default value down here is like this. Oh, right. We actually need to set it specifically to undefined. That's what we want. Yeah. And we need to check that this is not equal to undefined. If those uh, those are the case, I'm not really sure if this is going to work, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, right. And that's the point at which we do setup state, add actor. We don't actually need to input anything here because we're going to add them. Right. So if we go down here, add actor. We don't want to, we're going to edit these directly. So we do this instead. Yeah. So you had an empty string and flight, flight modifier is undefined. And the name is an empty string. Like so. This is complaining. Unresolved variable. Like name, oops! I just uh, hit my the window. There we go. I I I, I hid the window for myself. Not for the stream, apparently. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look at this. Okay, that didn't help. Uh, okay, so name. Okay, it's just WebStorm being weird. So we're just gonna ignore it for now. Okay, we'll see if this works. I'm not really sure it does, but we'll see. Uh, the problem is though, no, because when it first becomes, uh, okay, I think this might actually work. Eh, we'll see. Well, some of it doesn't work because uh, it's not showing anything. The compiler says everything is fine. Okay, that's not encouraging. Does it have any errors? Lots and lots. Last actor is undefined. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, we need to probably do this. Here we go. Okay, this looks good. Uh, apart from the fact that they're in two lines with it, which they, yeah. We just need to move this to down here. There we go. Um, last actor is undefined. That is not very promising. So setup state should, uh, let's have a look in the storage tab, local storage for this. Yeah, so setup state is already set with a empty array to so delete this, right? Refresh this. There we go. Okay. So that probably, yeah. <clears throat> right. So we add some text here. Blue. Whoa. That's a lot of errors. Uh, intermediate value dot set is not a function. Okay, that sounds like an error inside of the... Hmm. Hmm. 
intermediate value times less than, okay. Uh, okay, let's think about this. This is supposed to be an array, so you can subscribe to it and get the actors. So these should be fine. Then we get here. Okay, let's let's skip this thing for now and see if we're gonna make this work. Okay. Get a blue dragon. Okay, this is not good. <laughs> Intermediate value dot set is not a function. Okay, why is it calling set on something? Claims to be in set, uh, right, okay. These are just a lot of internal functions. But it's inside of some kind of handler. So let's expand this a bit. Each value, actor.index. dot name equals this dot value. This does look right. Oh, whoa, 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 right. Okay. So we are not providing, well, yeah, because we're trying to iterate directly over the, mm, right. So it's trying to set up the, set the setup state, right. Okay. This makes sense. Um, So we go back to the state thing. So in this case, it's trying to set the state to update it. It didn't work. Did it work here? Or did we never try that here? Maybe. Yeah, we did. Ah, right. But yeah, well, hmm. Still a bit different. I kind of didn't want to expose set directly. We probably just have to, yeah. Set setup state dot set. Okay, let's try that again. I did remove all the... Uh, not really sure if that's a previous error or not. Okay. Blue dragon. Minus four. Okay, cool. So that seems to work. Uh, so let's add this back in. Baby dragon. Ooh, that is that is nice. Yeah. And the tabbing also works. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, that is pretty cool. So we just add a new layer uh, or a new uh, row whenever you actually fill out of the previous line, which is super nice. That is super nice. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, good. So you add all the... The... Um, the actors. Uh, let's actually tweak this just a tinsy bit. Let's make this three. And let's make this first one set a class and we'll call it 
uh, two, oh, two, oh, third. Thirds? Third. And the same goes for the first input over here. Uh, let's see, let's do class over here, two, third. Oh, we actually have to explicitly tell it to just use, oh no, because these have like a minimum size, I guess. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, we, uh, I need to change this to three, two. There we go. Okay. That's a bit better. Uh, maybe we should right align those. Does that make sense? I think so. Flight ma, ma, modifier input. Uh, text the line. There we go. Okay. So that all looks fine. So the next thing is we start the encounter. And I think the the last thing we need to do before we start the encounter is to remove actors which are not valid. Or no, that's not what we want either. So what we actually can do is we can check. Uh, there is something called like, is this the one? No, no, no. Um, you can you can set like a validation uh, criteria or like a valid on invalid area invalid what's this one doesn't say form no validate what's that do form no validate doesn't say there's like um uh, what's it called html input invalid Invalid event, yeah. Yeah, because this one, yeah. So input when it is invalid, yes. But how do I mark it as such? By setting required? Uh, let's see. Apparently I can do this by setting invalid. No, no I mean rather inquire, required. Uh, do, do, do. The invalid represents any input or other form element whose contents fail to validate. Constraint validation. Okay, so when you try to enter some, something invalid into a type thing, you can use a pattern min and max <clears throat> yeah so for the flight modifier we should probably change this to like a number and set a min of minus four and a max of 15 Probably just set the step two, just to make sure. Or is the default value value one step? 
it was one. Okay, it doesn't say what the for number, it's one. Okay, yeah, so we don't need to set it explicitly. Okay, so we can set a min length too. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Min length should be one. But these should only ev validate as invalid if you start entering something in the first field. Uh, this is not gonna. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna leave that uh, uh, like this for now and see how that looks. Okay, because then you can do this too, right? Yeah. And when you get to minus four, it stops. That's pretty cool. I'm not up to 15. Yeah. Excellent. That's cool. Right. So. Basically, if you start by uh, start entering something here, you should probably. Okay, for now, we're not going to allow any legal states and how we should surface that to the user. We'll leave that for later, I think. So we'll start up by validating all the Yeah, I think we will do that. Uh, for of it's still very confusing between the, the for of and for in. I think they really poorly named, but whatever. Uh, arguments, that's supposed to be setup state. No, 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 no. Setup state, there we go. Uh, let's call this actor. But we're not actually going to select the whole thing. We're just going to do everything up until minus one. Is that possible? No. <laughs> the, this is just me being confused between working between different languages. Uh, we're going to select everything except the last one. How do we do that? I think there is some kind of a slice. That's probably what we want. But we kind of want to know. Actually, we're just going to store this. So uh, let's call this actors. And it's going to be the setup state. And a slice out of that, which is going to give us a copy of a certain number of elements and from and I think the next one is two. Um, so setup state dot length minus two, I think. We should give us everything but the last actor. Then we are going to go here and say each actor of act in actors if either actor dot name if we don't have one of those or actor dot flight modifier hmm this is way where we need to be careful because if you don't enter no it should be uh, if it's undefined yeah that's fine un undefined for now, we're just gonna return from the function, so you're not allowed to continue. But later, we want to surface that in some way to tell them that yeah, you need to enter the flight modifier here to actually continue the next step. 
there is also a point that we might not want they might not want to enter the flight modifier directly they might rather want to enter the size or the fly speed of a creature because that's a that's a thing that's how you to calculate the flight modifier of a creature or vessel you dis, you def, um <laughs> You did it the not desire what what's the you determine that's the word wow yeah you determine the size of the creature or vehicle tiny small medium large huge or gargantuan and that gives you like a negative flight modifier then you take the size or the speed the fly speed of the creature. So if it's a fly speed of 10, you get a plus one flight modifier, for example, up to 150. So you basically take the, the fly speed divided by 10, and that's your your positive flight modifier. Then you subtract uh, the flight modifier based on your size, and that's your final flight modifier. And if you don't have a fly speed, you basically do by size. So if you're a flying, whatchamacallit, you, if, for example, you are a... Human, which um, uh, a human which has to fly on yourself, I would assume that you do like uh, your size is probably uh, calculated to be ten feet, which gives you a plus one, and then you're a medium creature, so you get a minus one, uh, minus two from that, so you get a total of minus one of a flight modifier. Anyway. You might want to. You might want to just enter your size and the size or fly speed. Your your creature size and fly speed. Um. Yeah. Your your size and fly speed, and uh, let the app calculate the the uh, flight modifier for you if you don't want to calculate it yourself. That might actually be better. <laughs> that might actually be better. That way you don't have to calculate it yourself. Why would you want to calculate it yourself? No reason. That is so much better. Yep, we need to change this. <clears throat> okay. And this goes all the way back to the for the the setup actor, which doesn't take a flight modifier, but it do it doesn't instead have okay. <laughs> uh, the flight foot modifier is still relevant because we need, we need to calculate it at some point, but we're not going to calculate it right now. So what we're going to do instead is export type flight speed. Fly speed. That's what they call it in the rules. Which is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. Then we are going to export another type, which is called size. And this is going to be one of, should it just be an enum? It should probably just be an enum. Uh, size, so export enum size, which is either, hmm, yes. Uh, so it is either tiny, which is zero, 
I think I can define this myself, yeah. Small, which is minus one. I think I'm allowed to do this. We'll see. Me medium, which is minus two. Large, which is minus three. Huge, which is minus four. And gargantuan, which is minus five. There we go. The setup vector will instead take a size of size and a fly speed of fly speed. There we go. Uh, both of these Yeah, we'll just define Yeah. So we go down here. This should instead, this is when you default the default value. Okay, so an empty name. Uh, the size should just be medium. That's a good default, I think. And the fly speed. Uh, sure, 30. That's a good number. <clears throat> Uh, we also need to update this. So it goes here, medium and fly speed equal to 30. Yeah. So during setup, Instead of wanting, okay, so let's not do three, but we're gonna do four, I think. That's still gonna be, yeah, it's, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be half. And this is not gonna be flight modifier label. This is gonna be size label, then we're going to do another, which is going to be fly speed label. Yes. Four. Half. Uh, let's change the name of this to not be flight modifier input, but it should rather be fly speed, Oop. fly speed input. So we're going to be number. The minimum is going to be 10. The maximum 150. The step is going to be 10, I think. I don't think you can have like 25 fly speed. It doesn't really matter. The rules doesn't account for it any anyways. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. This is gonna map to actor.fly speed like so. And we're gonna need another input. Nope, we are going to use an option. Isn't it? I think so. What, what's it called again? <laughs> uh, poo. Right. I need to look up how we bind these things anyway. Let's see. Uh, Svelte.dev, yeah. Uh, oh, they renamed it. Okay, that's why I didn't find it. All right, uh, let's see down here. Hmm. 
No, that's for, um, yeah. Uh, how do I? <laughs> I actually managed to forget how to make a drop down list. You, you do not option, but you do like, um, it's not a type of input, is it? Wow, this is so bizarre. I, uh, you do, uh, wow. What is it? <laughs> wow, really? Did I just do? Okay, this is a bit embarrassing, but I've suddenly forgotten how to make <laughs> drop down lists in HTML. Oh my god, drop down list. I really have to Google this. Okay, this is how uh, the level that we're at. Okay, let's see a select for <sighs> wow. That just escaped me completely. Right. Uh, okay. So we got to select. Uh, we're not going to give it a name or anything. I don't think that's necessary at the moment. Uh, and then we have options inside of the select. Wow. That is a bit embarrassing. <laughs> the value will be the different sizes, I'm thinking. Hmm. You know what? I'm actually going to change my mind on the type of the sizes. Yep. So I'm going to export a type rather called size. And instead of it being an enum, I'm actually just going to make it strings because that that's easier to map to, I think. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Tiny, small. Uh, actually, if we want to make it in the strings, we actually need to make them in strings like this. Uh, medium, large, huge, gargantuan. There we go. Yep. So this is going to be tiny. Small, medium, each as size. and huge gargantuan. So we're going to have an option for each of these. The value is going to be the size. And this is where the trick comes in. What does text actually render? Just plain HTML. So that's safe to use inside of here. So this is going to be text and the key is going to be setup dot size. This actually needs to be an interactive value like this. And then we're going to do these instead. And inside of here and do size. Let's have a quick look over here and see how this looks. Uh, this doesn't look at all. Okay, the compilation is fine. It says, Pedro, this could be due to syntax errors. 
Uh, are these fresh or are these stale? Size is not defined. Where? In state? <clears throat> 125. Right, that is correct. Um, this is just going to be medium. Okay, that's good. Strings. Uh, setup. Size. Uh, tiny. It's going to be called tiny. Small. Small. Medium. Is medium. Huge and gargantuan, gargantuan. Yeah, okay. Um, so those are nice. Uh, how do we bind to selects again? Does it fall within the binding uh, select value? So we got values, blah, blah, blah. Then we use select one of them, bind. Select multiple, that's number one, bind value. And you get a single value. Yeah, that's fine. So with the select, we bind the value to actor.size. Sure. Okay, that looks to work. Nice. So for this, instead of the flight modifier placeholder, we are going to use the fly speed placeholder, which is gonna require us to update in here. Flight modifier placeholder. Um, so this flight modifier label is gonna be a size label, which just says size. And then we're gonna have a fly speed label, which is called fly speed. This right here is going to be a fly speed placeholder. It's going to be 10. No, let's go with 30, 30, 30. There we go. And this is going to bind to fly speed. Yeah. Should maybe say like feet in parens, just to make sure. Mm. Yeah, we'll leave it in. Okay, this is good. <clears throat> but now the question becomes, when do we add another line? When you fill in the fly speed, I think? Yeah, that, that's probably it. Uh, that's not what we want to do. Here we go. Um, for the actor, not, not the strings, but the state. Uh, what do we say fly speed is? It's always a fly speed, right? So how do we know when it's not set? When it's unexpectedly undefined? Hmm. 
Hmm. Should all these just be optional? Is that more correct, I think? Yeah, I think that's actually more correct. Yeah. Also, it helps that none of them can be null now. Well, should they rather be... No, oh, because they're undefined if they're not set like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably good. So when you're adding here, we should probably just do this. Are allowed to do this? Yeah. Like so. And when you add another actor, it shouldn't have any value set, right? Like this. That's probably better. So inside of here, when the last actor, actor's name and their size has a value, and the actor dot fly speed has a value. And all these are set at another actor, right? So go here, say old dragon. It's huge. And has a fly speed of 50 maybe. Yep. No, that's not the line. And then at the end, when you want to try to start, we slice. We don't include the last line because that's never supposed to be included. And we check that each actor's name is set. If it's not set, or if the size, if there's no size, or if there isn't a fly speed, we return immediately, right? So we go over here, this doesn't work. If we set a fly speed of 40 and a fly speed of 60 for this, then it moves on. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, that is really cool. Uh, so that's a very much improved setup uh, process. So let's commit this. Improve setup flow. Uh, add support form. All the actors. So the DM, the, the DM now sets up all the actors. Uh, all the actors. And they need to specify a name, a size, and a fly speed. Right, so the next part will be that the, the next part is this, the connect phase where players will connect and select which actors they are supposed to control. I don't think that I'm going to add that step for at this very moment, uh, because I don't have any support for selecting the different actors, basically. Uh, or, or rather, no, no, no. I don't have a set, set, system set up for players to connect. So that screen is, f at the moment, not necessary. So the next screen will be the scramble phase, where we, uh, where everyone scrambles. And I think, and that's where we connect the set of actors to the actual actors. So that's when everyone scrambles and they get the results and we add it all, we calculate everything and add the, the final actors to the encounter state, which, uh, which then is used for the encounter, which will have the initiative order. It will have the uh, 
it will have the initiative order and everything uh, to, to, where you can calculate everything. F yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. That, that's that's it. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it for now. I've I see that I've been scream streaming for two, screaming. Well, streaming for two hours, and it's getting pretty late, so I should probably uh, hit the bed. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for now. The next uh, part will be uh, resetting up the scramble phase again and preparing the encounter state as i said so that's it for tonight thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time snuck